Hello and welcome back to Code Blaze. So first of all, I want to apologize as it's been a while and I know uh, I was kind of preoccupied with a lot of stuff. But today uh, I finally got some time and we are starting a new series today and we'll be creating color switch in Godot targeting both PC and the Android platform. So if it's your first time hearing about color switch, uh, you can just try it out. Go to the Play Store, download the game, play it two or three times. So you essentially get the feel of how the game works and what the core gameplay loop is. This series is going to be fairly beginner focused, as in people new to Godot or game development in general. But I expect you to have some basic knowledge of programming, like what's a variable and what's a function. Also in the description, I'll have a link to Godot's official starting guide. So they have this great tutorial on your first game. Uh, even I started with this only when I first opened Godot and it will take you through all the basic features and functionality of the engine. So I recommend you give this a read as it will give you a strong base and help you understand a bit better on what's going on in this series. So let's take a look at what we will be creating. So we'll just be creating the endless game mode and like this will be playable both on Android and PC. So essentially the goal would be to get the highest score possible and the player can only move through objects that have the same color. Also the color changes quite frequently as that adds a bit of the challenge to the game. And we'll have the complete game loop with the start screen and screen and some UI to display the score. Right. So let's get started by creating a fresh Godot project. And also to note here, I'll be using Godot 3.3.2 for this. And if any updates come out, I'll be updating to the latest version. Also, if there are some compatibility changes, maybe you're watching this in the future and you have like Godot 3.4 or 3.5. I'll try to point them down below in the comments something changes along the lines but i think everything should be fairly stable as we are using some pretty basic features and basic logic here okay so let's get started so let's go ahead and create a new godot project here so i'll browse it to the correct path that would be under godot create a new folder yt color switch and we'll be using the ES3 backend as that is what, you know, recommended the greatest and latest. And let's just create this. The first thing we'll do is play with our project settings a bit since we want a portrait look and we want touch input also to be handled. So if you go inside project settings, scroll down to the display section, we can change the resolution for our project and that would be 1080 by 1920. So note here, 1920, I have it on the height. That way I'll have the portrait orientation. And for test width and height, I will go for 450 by 800. This test resolution will be used when we launch the game from the editor so that we get a small window, not something that just takes up the whole screen, right? And this normal resolution will be used when the game is running as an independent executable okay next we'll set the orientation here as we want the portrait orientation and finally we'll change the stretch settings so that our game looks good at most of the standard resolutions out there since well mobile devices come in every sort of resolution possible so you may need to tweak with these settings a bit if you have some kind of a different device or some unstandard resolution out there so the stretch mode would be 2D since it's a 2D game and aspect we'll keep it to expand so that way it will basically fill out the screen as properly as possible. So that's all our display settings and next we'll change our input settings. So in the input devices you go under the pointing section. Here make sure this emulate mouse from touch is enabled. So what this would do is basically any touch input would be treated by the engine as the mouse input so that way we just need to code for handling the mouse input and that is what basically we'll do handle the mouse input for pc 
since it's being touch input would be emulated as mouse input we'll get the game working on android or mobile devices out of the box so nothing special that we would need to do there uh just make sure this flag is ticked on okay so next we'll start importing our assets so if you head over to the github repository of the project link down below in the description you can download the project as a zip file and here you'll see the assets folder so basically all you need to do is copy this assets folder in your current the new project you have created so all our assets are as SVG format and then you'll get the import files also. So that would be the correct settings. So that is what I'll go ahead and do here. So I just have this assets folder extracted from the zip file and I can just drop it here. So now if we take a look at the assets actually, so most of them are SVG files and the benefit of the SVG files is that you can change in the scale here. So by default, the scale would be one, but for player, as you can see, the scale would be set 2.5 and this default, these values are coming because the import files are there as part of the assets folder. So that's the only benefit here. Godot currently doesn't support any runtime SVGs. So when you drag these images into the scene, they will be rasterized. So we'll move this to 2D also. So what I mean by that is, once I place this image here, this is nothing different than a PNG image. I can't get the benefits of SVG here. But the only benefit of using SVG images is that I can control the size here in the editor itself. So you can play around with these scale values on your own. What best fits your device's resolution and all. But I think the defaults that I have already set for these images should be good enough for most cases. Right, so I'll just go ahead and delete this. And with that, we have our assets imported. So you can go ahead and take a look. As you can see, most of these assets are in white in color. So we'll be managing the color programmatically. And there are small parts also to create the traps and the circles that we want. So yeah, uh, that's it for this episode. And in the next episode, we'll talk about how to organize the project structure what the scenes and the nodes in Godot mean and we'll also discuss the overall scene structure of the game and that will basically be the basic or the base foundation for the whole project once we decide with the scene structure we just have to go and implement each and every part individually and that's the beauty of Godot like everything can be as individual as it wants to be uh, in an individual scene and you can create multiple instances of it now if these terminologies are not that familiar to you um, rest assured i'll be covering them all in the next video also you can again go ahead and read through the first uh, the original godot tutorial series the link will be down below so thanks for watching and subscribe for the upcoming videos if you have any suggestions leave them down below in the comments and share it with your friends helps the channel grow bye